evening, ladies and gentlemen. If I can have your attention, I have an announcement to make. I'm Gene Culpepper. I directed tonight's play. The, uh, the circumstances surrounding tonight's play are uh, a little unusual. You see, I was very flattered when Mr. St. John Romer is in the end. As you probably know, the program, air is spelled H-E-I-R, Mers in the air, get it? Yes, well, as I was saying, I was very flattered when Mr. St. John contacted me and asked me to direct his play's premiere production. Actually, it was a work in progress, and he made changes and rewrites throughout the rehearsal period. Well, it was very exciting to be part of creating a brand new work. To tell the truth, it put quite a strain on me, the playwright, and the cast. Right. Hush! Actors should be unseen and unheard until curtains open. Sorry about that. The fact is, the cast and I are feeling a little nervous about tonight's performance. Because, well, it's not quite finished. Oh, don't worry, we're, we're going to go on. The show must go on, as someone once said. I don't really know who said it, but looked at my hands around his neck. Anyway, as I was saying, the show wasn't quite finished. You see, it's a murder mystery. And most characters have great motives to kill. Well, you'll see too. The thing is, Mr. St. John couldn't make up his mind which character he wanted to be killed. In fact, he wrote several different endings in which various suspects were revealed to be the murderer. We performed them all for him, and he still couldn't decide which character he wanted to be the killer. As it got closer and closer to opening night, the tension in the air, that's air, grew so thick it could cut it with a knife. It got so bad, in fact, that Mr. St. John had what I feel sure would prove to be a temporary breakdown. The reason he's not here with us tonight is because he is presently on a heavy station in a very nice place run by soft walls with lots of padding. Some people have all the luck. The casting crew I make, and I are here, though. We are determined to provide an entertaining show for you, even if it kills us. <laughs> That's just a figure of speech, of course. This brings me to my main point of being up here, to announce that you're going to have to help us. If you look in your programs, you'll see we've inserted a QR code along with a URL. As you watch the first act, you'll discover which characters have motive to kill someone. A person who will indeed be dead by the time that ends. During intermission, we need you to use the QR code the URL, or the voting station set up in Storm Alley, to vote for the character you think is most likely to kill someone. Once your votes are in, we'll tell them quickly, and for the second act, we'll play the scene that Mr. St. John wrote, that is the character the majority of you voted for as the killer. At least, we hope that's what will happen. We got very confusing during rehearsals. It's a wonder we didn't kill the playwright. Question. Anyways, um, you might as well get started. I saved myself a seat up there in the front where I can follow the script and help out if uh, things get a little shaky. Which they won't, but just in case. Are you ready, cast? As ready as we're proud of you. Then uh, let's do it. Places. Lights. Mr. Stepbrother's bedside, and he 
must have been slain. I assure you, Miss Withers, the room is spotlessly clean. I certainly hope so. With Mr. Starkweather's medical condition, the merest smell of dust could prove fatal. I served as Mr. Starkweather's housekeeper for many years before you came here, Miss Withers. I don't need you to tell me how to do my job. You've got coffee? Yes, ma'am. I forgot the table, Mr. Ness. Now go home and go to the refreshment Yes, ma'am. Mr. Starkweather wishes to have everyone present in the drawing room at 8 o'clock sharp. I'll ask them some hers to fetch the guests from their room. Mr. Starkweather will be ready. I'm coming, Mr. Starkweather! <laughs> I don't know how the colors talk to your eyes like you told me. As I told you, oh, I wasted my breath. You're dripping water all over the foyer with this. Besides, how many times do I have to tell you that servants only enter through the back door? I'll work it out for them. Mr. Hurst, stop. <coughs> it's raining out there. I'm aware of that, and now it's as if it's been raining here as well, thanks to you. You're welcome. I don't need to the kitchen. You wait there until I summon for you to pop your master Simon's car. Oh, well, I'm going to sit by the stove to see if I can go get it. Don't be impertinent. How can I be? If I don't know what it means. Just wait there until I summon it for you. <coughs> Do you think you can manage that? Well, I don't know. But suppose we can find out. Just head on into the kitchen and wait there. The back door. Have you already forgotten that I just told you that servants only enter through the back door? Nope, but I was hoping you had. That man is an idiot. I heard that. Anyone to be calling you by another name, it will be me, 
and do Don Juan Pinel, which one I'm thinking. <laughs> uh, Minerva, you never change. Neither do you. More so pitiful. I'll take a seat next to your mom. Yes, Commander. Sorry, sorry. 
Oh, yes. We'll see with Lucas is on his entrance. Worse. What? Give them their entrance key. What is it? He'll probably get everything. Who will? Your cousin, Simon. Oh! Okay. Yeah, they'll probably get everything. I'm very pleased with your investigation. I'll be glad to recommend you to my clients. Just doing my job, Miss Mansell. Good evening, everyone. I know I haven't met yet, but I've got a pretty good idea to go all off. Mrs. Starfeather and her son Jordan, I presume. That's right, Mr. Davis. Call me Mark. The wrong Liz, Liz, and said, you are some sort of detective, right? You got that. Right. I see. Who's this nice young man here? He's a detective. <gasps> a detective? How exciting! Do you know Jessica Fletcher? <laughs> no, no. He's way out of mind. I do know who you two think is for. <laughs> well, if you're a proud investigator, I'd be surprised if you didn't. That accent sells. You're Paul Thompson. You're 100% correct. I can't deny from the leap of sound. Speaking for me, give yourself to live in Central America. That leaves you to be Captain Connors. It's good to find a meet in person. Me too, Mike. Mike and I have corresponded by mail and fax on Mr. Starkweather's behalf. Is this he taken? No? Okay. And I expect you to remain unobtrusive. I sure will! I sent it to my dictionary and look it up! Just sit over there by the fire and wait there. By the fire? Glad to. My bath tonight still comes on you. Keep an eye on it. I shall go <coughs> If an already dismissed man say I shall go for all this stuff. Yes, thank you, Mr. Nurse. There's coffee if everybody else wants some. I can do something, I How do you take it? Is it cold? Miss Van Zee, I understand you're going to sign the desk with your talk that's in the That's correct. Frankly, I do not think it's a good idea. Mr. Stark has talks with the Karis best. I advise him to communicate with you all by mail if he insists on bringing his dark little venture. I do hope he doesn't like to regret that decision. I could have 
have searched my vocabulary extensively, and now I found such an apt description as bummer. Glad you like it. According to my doctors, I would have to remain prisoner in this weak old body much longer. There's only one thing I hate to leave behind. That's my money. You know what they say, Uncle. You can't take it with you. Yes, that is what they say. So several years ago, I had Lois here draw up my bill. I suppose you'd like to know how I provided for you, my heirs. Ah, for one me. I'm just a teensy bit curious. A teensy bit, eh? Hey? <laughs> I was. 
not a cure for my various ailments, but a cure for dying. And I did find itch. Cloning or slice of meat. Through modern science, I shall live forever. It's not right. That's neither here nor there. Let the moralists and politicians debate that question for decades to come. But in the meantime, Dr. X, as Davis named him, will be creating a brand new me. A lot of you seem displeased. Sit down with us. Not because of the moral question, but because of the change in fortune. Too bad. Cloning is very expensive. The process I require must be done in absence of secrecy. But I will have a sizable fortune left in the new me to inherit. No doubt, I will be the first person on earth to become my own heir. Withers, <laughs> <coughs> <coughs> my blood pressure. <coughs> We were wrong! We were 
Yes, mother, we are the Simon game of the fortune, right in front of her noses. Then it's natural to obey. That was me. <laughs> me? The man is a monster. Then he sees evil in his eye. He enjoys pulling the rug right out under our feet. Yeah. We see the women of 50,000. <laughs> to him, that's no more than tossing a dime to do better. And he's just doing it to keep us from doing his new will. If Uncle Simon did die tonight, then we get our money. What do you mean by here? Would anybody care for um, a game of bridge? Pay for your thoughts? That's all I'm in for for now. It's Jordan. It's Jordan, remember? Only for the nerve or the dragon will be around. Why are you doing away? I thought you were going to come back. I was going to turn in, but then I didn't urge him in the snap. I'll fix you something. Uh, never mind, Dad. What are you doing up? The stress sent me in here to make sure the fireplace is properly closed and the sparks pop out on the ground. And burn part of the wood into the ground? Maybe that wouldn't be such a bad idea. You know Mr. Stark Brothers is invalid. How can he... You've read my mind. Jordan! You know... Jean, Lime... You got me a call... You got me a call in your first name? Thank you, Jean. You got me a call your first name. You mustn't even suggest such a thing. It's wicked. Why not? Everyone knows I'm the black sheep in the family. If it happens tonight, you've had millions, and I've had billions. Think of the good times we've had together. Don't. It's a tempting thought. I'll admit it. It's not. It's a horrible idea. Which part? Getting the money, or are you going to be together? I about the money. Then, what about us? Um, don't say. I thought they were going to help me with the dishes. I, I was checking to make sure the front door was locked, remember? I see. And what are you doing in here? I, uh, I wanted a midnight snack. And I saw Nancy, and I wanted a late check. But that was not just yours. We're going to get you in trouble all of these days. Minerva, what are you doing at night? Thank you. 
Thank you for your thoughts. Jordan, I just came down for a breath of fresh air. What are you doing up this way? Munchies. What would you do? No thanks. So, did you, Miss Vincent, finish a new will? Yes, it's already sent for Mr. Stark with a signature. I see you've come down. I wouldn't blame you if you hated me. Why should I hate you? If I was the same shoes as you, I would be the same exact deal. I'm sure you would, Jordan. Except, you're missing something. What? The little tech made a dad. Point to mold them and guide them into the perfect rock and roll right on the side of the cell. You think so? I know so. And you would be a better college than I. You know, you're a very happy woman, Jackie. We're going to mix business with pleasure. <laughs> Take your crummy hands off me. <laughs> what? And by the way, forget it. If I decide to start with these fathers after he's born, I'll pick a suitable husband then. And it won't be a sleazy, money hungry, slime ball like you, Jordan. You know, I, I could kill you, you witch. I wouldn't do that if I were you. Not with a detective in the house. Yes, well. 
else, if you'll excuse me. Can you be ironic if tonight, the long night on the day, they did? Is this a private game or can anybody play? 
Oh, Mr. Davis, we're just picking up Phil Bill. Is that it? I thought Phil would find her in Marvel Turner.
Also, I need to know, I do think all of you and your staff have either seen or heard during the last few hours might lead to the killer's identity. Please. You got it. The who, what, why, where, and when. That's what the detective has to work with. The motives in this case are obvious. The other elements aren't that. But hopefully they will be by the time I'm going to fire my Who should we start with? Since you're playing with freight, call me one. Okay. How about you, Ms. Thompson? Do you mind being first? I'm awfully tired, but if I had to... You don't have to. None of us do. What do you mean, Jordan? I mean that Mr. Davis isn't a real police officer. We don't have to tell him the time of the day. That is true, but that would look awful suspicious of you if you were the one who didn't cooperate. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. Well, you know what? Are you accusing me of doing it? No. Simon has a point. Do you want me to tell the cops if everyone cooperated except you? Oh, all right. I'll answer them questions. But first, I'm going to take Mother upstairs and have her lie down for a bit. She's getting up in the air and needs her rest. Jordan! I'm no spring chicken, but I'm not Miss Melusa either! Calm down, Mother. You need your digits out. No, but if I did, there's probably still some under the sofa. You can call us when you're ready for us. Up in years. Oh, so you want to question everyone in private? Kathy, you can come to me with the iron. I want to read over the old pills to remain the official one. Sure, Lawrence. Excuse us. I'd like to stay. If give, staying would give me a better idea of what happened, I start from the mansion before I arrived. You're the boss now. I'm particularly interested in what happened between the time Mr. Starkler announced he was changing his will and the time his father was coming. How long was that? Several hours. Well, Miss Thompson, did you observe anything which occurred at that time? Might help us. Well, I was very disappointed by very disappointed by writing the son's name as my fellow man. I mean, I can understand why you might want to call him Tom Cruise, but writing the son, no offense, because it's Simon, but your grandfather is not a very nice person. Anyway, I spent most of my time in my room, but I did come out once on um, a little air. I was at the I was outside the kitchen door when I heard that cute little maid Nancy in Minerva talk. What did they say? What's the matter with you, girl? Did you leave her by the other room? You have one pillow of blood, I saw. I'm sorry, I'm not here, I'm so confused. <coughs> about what? The no good scat of Jordan been bothering you? Jordan? I mean, Mr. Starkweather? What makes you say that? It's when I bought the uh, two of you in the living room. You two was telling my big thoughts together. We all will be doubly like. What was he saying to you? I think he wanted me to. To yeah. do something you didn't want to do? Yeah, that's not what you're thinking. I'll bet. You better stay away from you, or I'll put him down to size. You never know. He's not interested in me. I heard him with in the car. <laughs> oh, I get the picture. When you lost your million skills, he just you didn't he? He's following the way straight to the Collins girl, isn't he? He proposed to her, but she laughed at him. Good for her. So is one like the lady form. Don't call him that. Ah, uh, you hung up on an orange, you. Don't be such a fool, Nancy. Jordan would just toss his side if he said he doesn't know the girls are there. Maybe he's ready to settle down. If Mr. Starkweather hadn't changed the book, Jordan would be free to... Free to do what? Nothing. You don't mind, I'm going to bed now. Go on. Nancy? Yes, Minerva? Watch your door. That little scene on the foyer was a flashback. We showed a conversation Paul overheard before the murder. Other character stories, well, portions of them, will be shown in the flashback too. Isn't that clever? I just want to make sure you got that. Uh, that's all. That man is really out of order. Uh, so tell me, Mrs. Chen, did you see or hear anything suspicious earlier tonight? Before Mr. Starkweather was murdered. Suspicious? I suppose you call having a gun around the house suspicious. A gun? Even though Mr. Stein was not shot to death. Who has a gun? Besides me. Paula tells the mask one. She claims she's a regular old and old police. But she mentioned how easy it would be for someone to go through those scratch doors and kill Mr. Starkweather. Did she now? Ask her herself. Anything else? Well, I suppose I did overhear a rather odd conversation between Mr. Starkweather and Rufus. I have gone upstairs to distribute 
internally feasible power outage, which came to be very useful. Um, I was about to turn on the corridor onto the West Bay when I saw Mr. Starkweather down at the far end by the stairs. If I had a oh dear. Miss Starkweather? Rufus, you nearly scared me on the year's road. That's okay, ma'am. I'll hurry right, for you all grow sideways. I certainly won't not. What are you doing with that TV set? It doesn't look like it's affordable. It is now? I bought it for a guess that I've been used. Whatever for. Well, you see, I am so <coughs> So I saw it on the TV. But every damn damn channel is free. Coco Mountain is free. But seems a little too goody goody for my taste. And when you 
get down to it, all those southern girls can work on the problem when they want to, but when you get down to it, Scarlett O'Hara was pretty ruthless. We put some cousin Paula has a drum. See what I mean? That has something you call not natural for that. Well, what are we going to do? Do? What can we do? It's out of our hands. Well, don't be such a weird cousin, Jordan. Then my rat can go into us. It's got to be kid. I know. Maybe we can break the new will by having Graham decide to play as mentally insane. Thought of that, but it won't work. If Quinn was just a wild theory, we probably could. But it isn't. It's been done. He's going to be the first person to call himself. He might be bizarre, but an name is we lose the case. Yeah, we probably got a tennis on our parents on those borders. Like that Miss Van Zandt, she... What? What is it? I'm thinking, can't beat them, join them. What? I just found out a way to put Miss Van Zandt to put in her teeth. What is it? Well, think for yourself, Jordan. Now, if you'll excuse me, I need to talk to that lawyer. Can't beat them. Oh! Now, where'd that candy be? It's true. Jordan did suggest we got married, but it wasn't what you call a romantic proposal. It was more like a business proposition. You were going to have access to millions. What did Jordan have to offer you? Himself, I guess. In my opinion, that first time would be worth two cents. And you did turn him down? Jordan was attractive in a smarmy sort of way. Any woman to marry him would be a fool. Will you be like? I'm no fool. I knew that. One of the seven parts of that. You were smart enough to cure a grandmother's clone. Look, Simon, once Mr. Stark's mother had made up his mind to clone himself, nothing was going to stop him. So he would have found a surrogate mother somewhere else. So it might as well have been me. I know. I just. I think the whole situation is kind of creepy. You're a lot nicer about it than the other areas were. For example? Paula, she hadn't given up hope on getting her hands on Mr. Starkweather's money. How do you know? I was with Lois in her room. Paula knocked on the door just so she could speak to Mrs. Van and Sam in, in the corridor. Lois went out with her. She didn't close the door completely, so I couldn't help but overhear that conversation. Very good, Miss Thompson. Preparing that new wheel? Yes. Miss Van Zandt, you're a lawyer. Are you sure this coin business is legal? You can lose the license to practice, couldn't you, if... The process will be formed in Belgium, as we told you. I've also done a platter. Well, have lawyers been disbarred before for behaving that's unethical, if not illegal? What's your point? I'll oh, ain't on the deal. You can pay me through the biggest trust fund or the biggest name, act or whatever. I don't care what your name the position. If you refuse, I shall report you to the Bar Association. Isn't that what you call it? It is. Let me give you some free legal advice, Ms. Thompson. In the first place, if you're to make any accusations against me before the court procedure is completed, I'll sue you for the $50,000 you receive and everything else you own, and I'll get it. In the second place, after Little Simon's born, I plan to close down my office and devote my time to Kathy and Little Simon's care. I don't care the least if I shall be disbarred. You don't have to be a lawyer to offer or say anyone can do it. Oh. So you see, young woman, your little threats are meaningless. And as an officer of the court, I shall report your feeble attempt at extortion to the police. I wasn't! Save it! Take your silly southern self out of my sight, and I might be willing to forgive it. Oh, rat! I'll go! You! You lawyer! Yes, Mrs. Trump? I saw him from the Christmas Carol dress on the way. I was fine with you that I just passed him off to the power building. That's very thoughtful. Thank you. Kathy's in my room. I'll take one for her also. Mrs. Thompson? Oh, all right. I've got to go to my room. There's something there I need to get. What's the matter with her? It's the same thing as the sir. Miss Thompson played her ace, and I trumped it. In a matter of speaking, I'll take these to Kathy.
If I remember correctly, when Kathy Bowen saw Mr. Starkweather's body on the screen, you ran in the front door. What were you doing outside, Lucas? I was outside? Yep. Yes, I was. I was going to get, I was going to keep you from the We know why we this. You? All the actors on your TV set were green. You sure shot the fast down here. Did you see or hear anything outside? I... I saw an owl and I heard from the bullfrog. I meant you, members. I saw... Jordan on the patio. Don't know what he was doing out there. Earlier tonight, Chris, did you hear anyone talking about the new will? I heard Benzinger, Benzinger is in the Minerva. Benzinger is the Minerva? Yep. What were you saying? That they should get their money. And it was not fair. That's what. <coughs> Very well. We must go in there. Who's going to stop me? I shall, if necessary. You and who's all right? No, 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 I totally agree with you that we're wrong, but confrontation is not the answer. Then what is? I have patience with her, but he hasn't signed it really yet. Perhaps by morning he'll have changed his mind. We should live so long. No, 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 he should live so long. <laughs> Nancy, but Jordan felt himself and 
I'm just trying to put anybody who gets in his way. I guess I knew that. But Rebecca tried to warn me. I even heard him post Miss Collins, and she laughed at him. Do you think Jordan was cold-hearted? Kathy is just as bad as he is. I was taking fresh towels to the guest room when I remember it was, and Kathy was talking. Can you believe it? Those soulful gaze to my work on some innocent maid like Nancy? But he learned quick enough that I am no pushover. I wish I'd been there to see it. It's time Jordan met his match. I should tell Nancy about the maids that worked here before her. Then again, Jordan's the Playboy days would be over soon enough, though. What do you mean? Think about it. Mr. Starkweather has given Fiona, Simon, Paula, and Jordan a generous portion of his allowance. Once he passes on, the 50,000 recruits will be the last to get on Starkweather's fortune. So I have to learn what it's like to work for a living. Cyrus almost out of school, he'll be fine. But the others, they'll blow their money in no time. And then what jobs can they get? Can you imagine falling behind the desk of a car rental agency? Or Jordan driving cars at a lot for customers? <laughs> and what will Fiona do? So Avon? <laughs>
Yeah, it was there. Okay. It should have been enough to pinpoint our murder, but I wish I had more. It could take weeks to get the results. If the will is probated, then the killer gets his or her inheritance by them. The killer, they could disappear for good. You can buy a new ident identity easily enough for a million dollars or more. There must be some way I can nab the guilty party tonight. I just wish we would have learned more from questioning the suspects. Me too. They were so busy trying to make each other look guilty, they didn't reveal much about themselves. But sometimes the slightest, Simon, move your feet. What is it? Here, on the rug. What do you see? Here, on the rug. There, there must have been something that they were hiding the whole time. It was so insignificant, I feel stupid for not realizing sooner. Quick, go tell everybody. Minerva sent me in to see Flick Pop. Forget that. Go upstairs and help everybody come down here on the double. Yes, sir. I'm sure the chief of police won't mind if I use sandwich bags to collect evidence. I'm sure you won't mind at all. Thank <laughs> you. 
discovered through Taylor Gray on the assignment? That's right. First, I had to find the answer to a question that bothered me from the beginning. It would have been so easy to make it appear that Mr. Starkweather had died from natural causes, a suggestion that, Ms. that Jordan Starkweather made to Ms. Winters. For example, Mrs. Starkweather and her son could have given him some of her digitalis to trigger a heart attack. So could several others among you who were aware that she had them and left several on the floor of this room. No doubt when she spilled them earlier tonight. Miss Withers could have achieved the same result by injecting a hair bubble into the bloodstream with a hypodermic needle. Again, any of you could have stolen the needle from her room and done the same thing. Also, it is highly probable that some of you considered frightening the old man for that. Minerva with her knife. Miss Thompson with her gun. Rufus with his axe. Bensonhurst with his rent. The possibilities are endless. Why? Would the murderer choose to put a blood pressure cup around the victim's neck and inflate it until he was strangled to death? The answer is so simple that I feel foolish for not realizing it sooner. What is it? Obviously, when the cup had been put around him, Mr. Starkweather was already dead. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Isn't that right, Miss Van Zandt? You're very clever, Miss Davis. It had been then. We were in here together when the lights went on. Mr. Starkweather began to ring his bell. I went to find Bensonhurst, and you, two, and you went to check on Mr. Starkweather. His killer was the murdered the man, slipped into Withers' room seconds before, before he found the body. That's what I figured too. So why did you have that As our aid detective here summarized, Murderer made an appearance on Mr. Starkweather had a heart attack. That's an indeed been due to not by natural causes. I went out in my mind, however, that somebody in this house had killed him. And the unknown circumstances the coroner was not conducting justice. Conduct an autopsy and a police contract investigation. I was about to let my employer's very regular scot free. I saw the blood pressure cough on the bed, put it around his neck, and inflated it, but we had them in his room. And your friend worked. No one would have guessed that he had been murdered. That was very difficult of you, Miss Fancy. For a while, her little ploy distracted me from the main problem. Instead of focusing on who did that, I kept wondering why did they do it that way. Once I saw that piece of the rest came easier. I'm sorry, Mr. Davis. So you found the identity of murder, the end seemed to justify the means. I imagine the police would. They might even manage to overlook the fact that you're guilty of tampering with evidence. If not, I'm on very good terms with the local judges. Wait, how do we know that Mrs. Van Zandt didn't kill him? Uncle Simon himself? Yeah. No, no. Oh. Oh. You know, I'll do you all better than then tell you who killed Mr. Stumpfeather. I'll show you. Stacy, imagine all of you still have the candles that Mrs. Trent distributed earlier tonight to keep with you in case of a black eye. Take them out, please, and light them. Oh, isn't this nice? Very Christmassy! When I examined Mr. Stumpfeather's body, I found that what I first thought were a few drops of blood in his back. Upon closer inspection, they turned out to be another substance entirely. I forgot about them for the moment when I was interrogating the individual. I noticed one of you scra scraping one thumbnail against the other at the time. At the time, I took it to be a nervous gesture. I guess you could say it was nerves triggered by guilt. As it turned out, I didn't realize the significance of the gesture until I recalled the nervous testimony. She reminded me of those of you who gathered in the kitchen with the candles when the lights were on a few moments ago. A few moments ago, I noticed these on the floor by the sofa, and I had the link I needed to identify the murderer. Thin scrappings of red towel, towel from the killer's thumbnail, towel from the red candle that the murderer was holding when, when she killed Simon Sarko, <coughs> towel from the one red candle among them that she was holding. Isn't that right, the murderer? I don't like the little of the red candles. There's not. I remember thinking that we need to buy some more for Christmas. This candle is the only evidence now to offer the police in this candle. No, I have better proof than that. I just examined Mr. Starkweather's body. As I was moving as I was moving about the room a few moments ago, I glanced at everyone's hands. I noticed there are very there are several very thin scratches on your wrist, made by Mr. Starkweather no doubt, as he struggled for his life. I'll bet my reputation that these skin samples I was able to scrape from under his fingernails came from you. It, it will be easy enough to prove, since I've met quite a few experts on DNA in the last few months. 
And don't you suppose you consider plundering those great friends and putting the new me in prison, would you? I don't think so. Well, Miss Van Zandt, I guess my biggest mistake was trying to cross the border. I might have caused you to lose access to the stock that was building the vault. You definitely got to the better. Why don't you tell us what happened? I might as well. You figured out the main details anyway. I was furious, Mrs. Stockmother, for building up our hopes, then dashing them to the ground. Lots of men that couldn't deserve to live. I listened at his door on the hall and slipped inside when I was sure he was alone. It was his wheelchair, still awake. I went to him. I gripped the handle of his wheelchair and then right down into his face. I told him what I thought he was playing to do was monstrous. I told him he didn't deserve to live. I told him I was going to kill him. Then I reached for his throat. He was terrified. He fell back into his chair and slumped into the bedside table. Sent the reading lamp crashing to the roof, crashing to the floor, and the pitcher walked right on top of it. When the walker hit the lamp, it struck the grid and blew the circuit breaker. So you didn't call this a blackout for liquor? No, it did it went to tech. What? I had the candle and matches in my pocket. And then she laid the candle with one hand, while I grabbed the off the mask off his chair with the other. I clamped the mask down hard over his nose and mouth. He couldn't breathe. He made a feeble attempt to fight back with one hand, while I rang that bell with the other. But all I could manage was a few insignificant scratches on my wrist as he noticed. That, and those scratches of candle back to his throat. The old man did no man was able to do much, but I guess it was enough to put his murder on me. Then I put the cuff back on his chair, blew up the gun, put it in my pocket, and wheeled and walked to the detective door in the spillers room. Her back was to me. I grabbed the candlestick off her bureau and struck her with it. She fell to the floor and the candle blew up. I assume this would have turning my parents' natural death into an apparent murder in this family. I stood through the connecting door into the hall. A few moments later, Kathy screamed. I joined the rest of you as the remedy. Okay. Yes, ma'am. 
I'm sorry about this, but I better see what it's all about. It's from Mr. St. John. He says he just came to from a drug induced coma. And when he woke, a fantastic solution to play the plague was crystal clear. Oh my, really? Yes, yes, that's brilliant. This new ending is unbelievable. Better than any of the other possible conclusions he's thought of before. We simply have to see it. It'll take a few minutes for me to go over and change some cats, but I'm sure they can handle it. Oh, I see some clues that need to go in the first act. So I guess we'll just have to do the whole play again.